Hey Light Warriors, welcome to another edition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. And uh, the news for the last week and a bit uh, has been interesting. Um, I've been at the Wellness Leaders Academy, their uh, Money Mastery Retreat, and it was all about the dimensions of how to manifest um, understanding, you know, sacred geometry. And this was really in alignment with what Source was telling me lately, which was getting seemingly redundant because <laughs> I kept hearing, uh, like when I'd ask, you know, what do I do to heal X, Y, Z, you know, I kept hearing attention and then not the word focus per se, but attention. And then I would hear like nothing or like the void or um, stillness, you know, all kind of like similar synonyms for all those and I thought wow stillness must be pretty darn important <laughs> now I've heard this from you know mindfulness stillness we've heard it a lot right from you know generations of yogis and uh, people meditating I guess for me I just needed my human self wanted the vested interest <laughs> to like give me the result give me the result what's the result you know, and the result is that um, th this was really, really key. And um, some of the, just a tiny little bit of wisdom from the, the Money Mastery um, retreat in Fiji uh, is we need to spend more time in that void and less time on making things work in our physical reality. And I'm really good, as you know, as many of you know, at doing, right? Like I'm just a masterful at doing and, and, and getting things done and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it does take effort, it does take energy. So how cool is it to be able to spend more energy, not necessarily time per se, but more energy in the stillness and be able to manifest with greater ease. And um, like, you know, Marcus and Andy were saying, my mentors were saying that, you know, they'd often have this conversation with, uh, you know, one of their master students that would go from literally like, you know, massively in debt or, you know, whatever, didn't find a way out, depressed, ready to give up. You know, after a 10 minute conversation and finding out a week or two later that they just manifested $10,000. Now, we can't say that that's going to be everyone, but they say it's very, very common and it's really this, this switch. And I resist, I got to be honest, I resist in being in the stillness. Um, I think that there's some subconscious programming for me about being busy and productive and being a valuable member of society. So ask yourself if you have similar programming like that, like somehow we need to be doing stuff. And for those of you that are, that are definitely struggling with money, um, as I was, think about how often our thoughts go to, why isn't it here yet? Why isn't it here yet? <laughs> you know, in other words, um, I learned also that, uh, when we put a deadline on what we feel like we want, deserve, you know, should show up by now, when we put that deadline in, we, we give ourselves some pressure. And when we have that pressure, say that deadline is coming up and you don't see the money manifested yet, that pressure causes this whole quantum, you know, shift to occur that that manifestation then gets pushed further out. And how human is it, right? to like just not notice, don't have the money yet, rent's coming up, don't have the money yet, you know what I mean? So every time we have that that um, perceived deadline, we push that quantum reality further away from us. Bummer. <laughs> so how much discipline does it take to really be in that space of seeing the end result, which is what we teach in the Unlock Your Superpowers program, right? Seeing the end result, feeling the end result, and not worrying about the how that it happens because our human minds are limited. We do not see the bigger how because it will unfold in the most beautiful way if you allow it. But every time you complain on Facebook or you complain to your neighbors or you even say, uh, I don't have money, I, I'm you know so much in debt, I don't have money, I don't have money, don't you literally push that money away from you. It takes so much discipline to get out of these 
I'm going to say bad habits, okay? So I've had to really train myself too. So these bad habits of putting so much verbalization and energy and power into what we don't want versus what we do want. And a lot of this seems like, ah, oh, I don't know, it's all hocus pocus, it doesn't really work. But you know what, the stuff I learned this week, I gotta tell you, it proved it to me. And I think there was still a little bit of questioning in my mind, like, how does this all work, you know? Um, but I'm ready for the magic. Are you ready for the magic? <laughs> so just that little hint is that it's been more of your focus and energy and attention um, on the void, on the stillness. I mentioned this, you know, in May when I was kind of on the tired side and just could sit there. Uh, for those of you that are fatigued and tired, uh, this is perfect for you because all you can do is be. You have very difficult time doing, right? So if you are just, if you are so exhausted that you cannot do anything, then this state is even more important for you and more magical for you because you can just be in that place of being, which means, yes, you might be completely exhausted, but in that exhaustion, oftentimes it's a parasympathetic reaction. Um, the medical doctor is coming out of me, but you know, this parasympathetic healing state. And when I get into that state of parasympathetic, uh, you know, being much, much greater than the sympathetic, um, it's super, super, like I call it super relaxation phase or super healing phase. Um, then it's so much easier to drop down into that stillness of that nothing. Think of it like, you know, waiting for your, th like your thoughts come, right? So it's like noticing the gap between your thoughts. And it's like, I could just look at the wall in that state and just stare at the wall for four hours. You know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, so if you're having that fatigue, this is perfect training for you to go, oh, I can use this because you are automatically going to end up spending more time and energy in that space of being than in the space of doing because you can't do. And that's where the magic happens. So in some ways it's a blessing uh, because it forces you to use this magic. Whereas those of us that have energy to do the doing will tend to overdo. So that's my commitment now is to work out ways in which I can recommit and recommit and recommit to just being more often and not focus so much on the doing. Yeah, I'd like things to magically appear too. <laughs> it's pretty cool when that happens. So um, the other thing I wanted to share with you is that this past week, um, there was some sudden profound sadness that was occurring and um, what it was connected to, if, if those of you that are starseed that were formerly light being starseeds, what was connected to was that there were collectives of star seeds, sorry, collectives of light beings who, my understanding anyway, um, decided they were going to return home, meaning back to source, back to the void. In other, in other words, they would cease to exist, which is different from a death per se. Like we talk about death, but our soul never dies. But this is literally returning back to source, back to nothing or no thing. And the rest of the, the star seeds and some light beings, I suppose, but mostly it was the star seeds, those that had become embodied, the light being, the light beings that had become embodied could sense that decision and basically was in a state of loss or um, a state of grief uh, because their light being collective friends were returning back to source and they would cease to exist. So it wasn't so much the light beings themselves being sad that they had made that decision because they'd made the decision uh, as a collective, but the rest of us feeling that profound, I'm going to miss you, you know, it was such a great ride, you know, that kind of <laughs> feeling. So if you had that sudden profound sadness last week, it might have been related to this. So, you know, we just bless and love. I did you know, create some new morphic fields around that, easing that burden, hopefully, for the collective, uh, all of us, star seeds that, that have that or had that feeling. So let me know if that was one of you and let me know if that helped. <laughs> um, the last thing I wanted to share with you, and I might have mentioned it before, um, but uh, it's really interesting. Sometimes we want to heal someone and if we ask source permission to heal that person, we don't get a yes, but what you can do is ask permission to heal any entities, hidden entities, 
or um, you know negative energies that would be affecting that person and sometimes when you directly heal the entities you get a yes uh, but you don't get a yes to heal the person because that's their first responsibility or they need to um, that's something that they need to deal with it's for their highest and greatest good it's not your responsibility to do that for them otherwise you take away you know their purpose their mission etc whatever so that's just a hint so in case you're having you know troubled family members or loved ones um, or friends that sometimes you get you don't get permission to heal them per se you can go ahead if you feel like they're you know got alcoholism suicide um, you know anger whatever you can actually direct it to any entities that might be affecting them in this time or lifetime or any other lifetime so that may ease some of their burden if you get permission to do that so ah well it's been a wonderful week in Fiji uh, for me um, it's funny I didn't get that much Sun but <laughs> I guess that's mostly in the retreat center um, and then we get out later at night but we had beautiful sunrises and sunsets and the Fijian people are so wonderful like every day you get greeted you know bula 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 from all the people in town all the people you know at the resort it, it was just at the airport I mean it's amazing so we're constantly saying hello and thank you like bula and vinaka you know I feel like doing that every day now to everyone they don't know what I'll be talking about but it was so amazing and uh, I'd love to go back anyway I will share more with you as time goes on uh, check out my other series called the light warrior wisdom video series where I'll be going through the main major mistakes these are shorter videos uh, that um, the main major mistakes that light warriors are make that prevent them from doing their soul's mission and enjoying their life in the process so stay tuned for those lots of love bye for now